Hey everybody, welcome back to In Bed with a Millennial. I'm the Millennial, Javeda Bay, and this is my bed. And we are keeping moving on this SDI, destigmatization, no shame train. And today I wanna to talk specifically about one STI, herpes. So let's do it. So herpes is also known as HSV, which stands for herpes simplex virus. And it presents in two different ways. You have Oral herpes, also known as cold sores. Yes, if you did not know, cold sores are a form of herpes. They are oral herpes. And then you also have genital herpes, which means that they show up in the genital region. That can be anywhere from the, like, around the clitoris, along the labia, um, around the vaginal opening, um, all the way down to the perineum, stretching and hitting the um, anus and on the penis it can be on the head of the penis the shaft of the penis the scrotum anywhere in the genital region that is where genital herpes can live exist present itself all of those different terms um and when it comes to herpes hsv it's important to note that if there is an outbreak outbreaks don't always necessarily occur at the exact same spot every time so if you were to have an initial um herpes outbreak on your mouth and it was on the left side of your mouth like right here in this little corner um the next time you got an outbreak it could potentially be sitting here on the right side on the bottom right side or it could be sitting in the middle herpes can move to different areas same goes with genital herpes meaning that you could have an outbreak um on your left labia at one point and then the next time it could be sitting um right below the vaginal opening right near your perineum vaginal um, ooh, not bad. <laughs> yeah. Herpes outbreaks can move um, oh, within the region that they exist. Um, so they may not always show up in the same spot. Some important things to know about herpes or HSV. Most folks with herpes or HSV are asymptomatic, meaning they might not have an outbreak ever for a very long stretch of time. Like it differs. Everybody's body is completely different. So it's important to know that you could have herpes and not know it because you have never had an outbreak or shown any symptoms. Um, and most people are in the same boat. So now that we know what herpes is, how common is it? Ha! Very, extremely so common that it makes no sense that people react and respond to herpes the way they do. Um, so, 67%, yes, 67% of the global population has HSV-1. 67% of the global population. There are over 1 billion people on the planet Earth. I wish I knew the exact number, but I don't. Over a billion people and 67% of over a billion have HSV-1. That is how common it is. Now we're getting more, a little bit more micro. Um, within the United States, 50 to 80% of Americans have HSV-1. 50 to 80%. It's really hard to actually know the exact number because herpes testing is not done with every STI panel. Um, but 50 to 80%. 50 to 80%. So once again, it is extremely common. And then one out of six people in the United States, ages 14 to 49, have HSV-2, one out of six, one out of six people. Again, not good with math, but like that's a pretty high number considering that there are billions of people in the world and a lot of them live in the United States. So more common than you probably thought. So why do we stress about it the way we do? Why do we act like it's like, oh my goodness, when majority of people probably already live with HSV? Stigma and shame is why. Um, and I would personally like to blame the film John Tucker Must Die. I know for a fact that that is where a lot of the terrible beliefs and views I held around herpes came from. That movie, when I saw it in the early 2000s, left a scarring idea on me around how bad herpes is and like, OMG, no. So screw you, John Tucker. Um, yeah, that movie, very bad. But it's so common. So understanding what it is and how common it is, how is it actually transmitted? Because it has to be transmitted for it to be so common, correct? Yes. Um, Close contact, just like with almost all other STIs, it's gonna happen from engaging with another individual who already has um, 
HSV or herpes. Um, and so this is going to be either from genital to genital contact or oral to genital contact. So this is how a lot of folks who um, have genital herpes actually get genital herpes is because someone who has oral herpes, aka cold sores, um, is probably performing oral sex on them. Um, and it is transmitted, which is why it's important to disclose that you have oral herpes, aka cold sores, because if you perform oral sex on somebody and you have cold sores, and then you can transmit herpes to them and it will live on their genitals. Um, so it's extremely important in the disclosure aspect to actually say like, oh, I have cold sores. That should not be something neglected if you engage in oral sex. It should still be disclosed. Um, but it can also be transmitted through genital to genital contact. So penetrative sex, anal sex, um, scissoring can all transmit um, herpes as well. So knowing that it can be transmitted this way a lot of people probably are not engaging in sexual activity during an outbreak so jave how is it being transmitted shedding shedding is how herpes is actually transmitted um to a lot of people and since most people are asymptomatic especially when they're shedding you don't know that you're transmitting it but you can be so what do you mean by shedding and asymptomatic so shedding is when the virus is present on um, the skin of an individual without any symptoms or an outbreak. So that means that if someone were to kiss that area while you're shedding, the virus can be transmitted because the virus is present, though it may not be present in the form of an actual outbreak which is important to know. Um, also, it's important to know that shedding occurs according to a study done um, citation here <laughs> um so according to a study done asymptomatic shedding occurred in 30 percent of the days of an individual within like a year of their life so 30 percent of the day so it's not like an everyday thing like the virus is not always present um asymptomatically but 30 percent of those days it can be um so that is when it is transmitted can be transmitted and you more than likely do not know unless you were actively like testing to see if like the herpes virus is present which you're not unless you're a doctor and maybe you have access to that but typically you don't know that um so that's why it is important to one like understand like sti testing getting sti testing disclosing that information but also barrier methods and things of that nature um that first year is when you it is more highly transmissible for someone who just contracted herpes um but all of this is not to like scare you like oh my goodness it's to let you know like it's super common also asymptomatic so you may not even know also like you can't pass blame on people because as you know herpes is not regularly tested in an sti panel meaning if you were to go to your doctor today and be like hey i would like to get a full sti panel done they would leave off herpes. Most doctor's offices do. They typically only test if you come in with open sores or lesions and then they'll swab it and they'll be like, oh, you have this strain of herpes. Um, but they're typically not gonna do a blood test. One, because of how common it is. Why cause panic and worry and hysteria in folks if it is something that is this common? Two, you would not necessarily be able to pinpoint like, oh, this is when you got it, how long you've had it all of those factors it just could create more worry for some people um so it's important to pay attention and notice like if you know that you have cold sores already being honest and disclosing that information because it is transmissible as herpes and if you're engaging in oral sex it can lead to genital herpes um but also if you're like wondering you can ask your doctor you can just straight up be like hey i know that you typically don't include herpes on um an sti panel but i would love it if you could actually test to see if i do have either strain of hsv present already and then you have a peace of mind in knowing um but it's typically not going to be on a testing panel um because most people won't know unless they actually have an outbreak and then that's when you go to the doctor and you get the medicine um so just know it's extremely common so so common herpes is so common um and it's also extremely manageable if you do end up um contracting herpes there are medicines you can take um especially for genital herpes to prevent outbreaks or to shorten or lessen the pain of outbreaks and things of that nature and as we all know from tv there are a wide variety of different cold sore medicines and things of that nature um but the moral of the story here is that one herpes super common two 
herpes easily spread because a lot of folks are asymptomatic and shedding is something that you cannot know you were doing at the time. Three, it's manageable. Herpes is manageable. It is not the end of the world. And four, the film John Tucker Must Die is really crappy for the way it portrays herpes and puts shame around it. And there is no need for that at all. Um, so yeah, what other questions do you have about herpes? Let me know. Drop them in the comments. Send me an email. All that jazz. Um, but definitely make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. You are following me on Instagram and TikTok. You are subscribed to my email newsletter. And you come back next week for an all new episode of In Bed with a Millennial. Because it's going to be good. And yeah, I'm going to see y'all later. Deuces.